I do not like seams. Uh -uh. No way. Hey guys, if you enjoy watching the guitar building videos that I post up here on my YouTube channel, I'd appreciate it if you might consider supporting my channel by visiting my YouTube merch store. Down below the description for this video, you'll see my merch shelf. And on that shelf, I've got t-shirts, plans for building guitars, and plans for making the tools that we use to build guitars. And if you can't see that merch shelf, don't worry, there's a link in the description as well. So just know that any purchase you make is gonna help support this channel, plus you're getting something in return. Now, if you would like to support the channel, but don't wanna spend any money, that's okay too. Just be sure to click the thumbs up button. That'll tell YouTube to promote my videos. Now let's get on with today's video. In a recent video where I talked about using carbon fiber to reinforce guitar necks, I had mentioned that I'm not a big fan of laminated guitar necks. And of course that sparked some controversy among viewers. So I thought I would address that in today's video. And basically, the reason why I'm not a fan of laminated guitar necks has to do with glue seams. And I'll get to that in a minute. First of all, what am I talking about when it comes to laminated guitar necks? Well, when I first started building guitars decades ago, I didn't have the resources that are available today on the internet. And I used a number of books and uh, I have over the years built up quite a collection of books on the subject of making guitars, both acoustic as well as electric. And in one of the books that I used early on, the author uh, had mentioned that you can, can make a neck blank by cutting profiles, side view profiles of the neck from a single piece of wood and then gluing them together, thus creating a laminated neck. And at the time I thought, wow, that's a really clever way to make use of a single piece of wood because like a lot of folks, when I first started building, I didn't have access to a lot of different kinds of woods and I had to make do with what was available. And at that time, what was available was maple boards that were three quarters of an inch thick, which was just not quite thick enough to make the necks that I wanted to make. So what made sense was to draw out side view profiles onto that board and then cut those out and turn them up on, or on edge so that I could glue them together to make the laminate. And that worked really well. And I think that's uh, a reason why laminated necks are so popular is that a lot of guys building guitars don't have access to the proper kind of wood that you would need to make a one piece neck from a single blank. And I have access, no problem these days, with woods anywhere from five quarters up to eight quarters thick. Uh, in the case of maple, it's usually flat sawn because I like the way flat sawn grain looks. In the case of mahogany or limba and other similar woods, I can get quarter sawn in those thicknesses. So I can easily make a neck from a single piece of wood. But for a lot of people, they simply don't have that kind of access. So they have to try to make do. And one of the ways to do it is to make the laminated neck. One of the reasons why builders will justify making necks using a lamination technique is they will say that a laminated neck has greater stability than a neck made from a single piece of wood. And that's debatable. Uh, you would have to do all kinds of scientific research to determine whether or not that's actually true. And to my knowledge, no one's ever done it. It's one of those hypothetical theories and opinions that people have when it comes to guitar neck construction. It is important to understand that if you're going to make a laminated neck specifically because you think it's going to have greater strength and stability, the grain in the pieces of wood has to be oriented correctly. The annular rings in each piece have to be laid out so that they uh, cancel out the potential for the wood to move. So in what most will do who, who make necks this way and are aware of that importance 
is they will mirror the annular rings, the, the direction of the, that the annular rings are moving in the wood, they will mirror that on one side of the next center line to the other. So if the wood would normally have a tendency to bow, let's say to the left, by mirroring those annular rings on each side of the center line, you cancel that out. Theoretically, that seems to be justified and a legitimate reason for making a laminated neck. Over the years, I've heard guitar builders and luthiers claim that a guitar neck made using the lamination technique is going to have greater strength, stability, and will be more resistant to warping, bending, and twisting as a result of changes in the humidity levels. However, there's no evidence or proof to back that up. And unfortunately, we live in an era where people seem to think that their opinions or their theories are equal to facts, which of course they aren't. And conversely, if I make the claim that a one-piece neck is every bit as strong and stable and, and less uh, prone to warping, bending, and twisting as a result of changes in humidity as a laminated neck, I'm kind of doing the same thing. I have no evidence or proof to back that up. However, in my own personal experience, and you can take this with a grain of salt, I've made dozens of laminated necks and I've made hundreds of necks using just one piece. And I honestly can't tell much difference. The only times I've ever noticed a significant improvement in strength and stability is when I've used carbon fiber to reinforce the neck. Another reason why guys like to make laminated necks is because they believe that it's a more efficient use of the wood that they have. And that's actually true because if you've got a single board, you know, say it's five inches wide, 30 inches long, you can arrange your profiles onto that board, cut them out, tip them up on edge, laminate them together, and you've made pretty efficient use of that single board. That's great, and that works really well. However, and I know this from experience, people have told me that making laminated necks is more environmentally responsible. That's not true because while you are making efficient use of that board that you have, to be environmentally responsible, you have to take into account the entire tree that that board came from. So even though you've made efficient use of that one single piece of wood, you have no idea how all the other boards that came from that tree are being used. And since the tree was cut down, and then turned into slabs of wood to be consumed by humans, you have to take the entire tree into account and how it's used, not just your one single board. Now, over the last couple of years, I have noticed that luthiers are starting to make laminated necks that are much more complicated than the way I learned to do it a couple of decades ago. Uh, when I first started making laminated necks, I learned from a luthier by the name of Robert Benedetto who demonstrated the technique by cutting his laminations from a single piece of maple. So he typically would have, you know, three pieces of maple which were all glued together. And that's how I was making mine and it seemed to make sense. But as the years have gone by, I've noticed that guys are incorporating more and more laminations and they're getting fancier with the way those laminations are laid out and they're using more and more species of wood. Well, every time I see one of those necks, I can't help but think, what's gonna happen you know, two or three years down the road when that neck has been exposed to changes in humidity. Because as you know, different species of wood expand and contract at different rates when the humidity levels change. So if you've got, you know, four or five different species of wood in your guitar neck, how's that going to be affected when the humidity levels change? Well, I can tell you from experience what's going to happen. Those seams, not only will you see them, but you're going to feel them as well. And I've noticed this on not only guitars that were several years old, but I've also noticed it on brand new guitars with laminated necks. I would pick it up and I could feel those seams. 
as the humidity levels have changed. So what the guitar player or the person who owns the guitar is ultimately going to have to do is periodically sand that neck to remove those seams, especially if they're really concerned about how their neck feels. And let's face it, a lot of guitar players are really concerned about how that neck feels. So if they feel a seam, they're not going to like it, and they're going to have to sand it down and refinish the neck. And that's perhaps the main reason why I don't like to make laminated necks. Too many seams. Of course, I realize that my perspective on laminated guitar necks is going to be somewhat controversial, especially to the lamination superfans out there. Uh, however, I rarely shy away from controversy when it comes to uh, my opinions on guitar building. And hopefully this video is going to provide food for thought for those of you who are maybe new to building guitars and are trying to decide whether to make a laminated neck or carve a neck out of a single piece of wood. Either way, if you got something in the video, please consider giving me a thumbs up. And as I said at the beginning of this video, you can support the channel financially and get something in return. Uh, but there's also another way you can help uh, support the channel financially, and that's by clicking the new thanks button down below. And that gives you the opportunity to give me a little tip. And with that tip, I use the money to purchase the lights, my camera equipment, my microphones, and a lot of the products that I review here on my uh, YouTube Highline Guitars uh, channel. So, uh, as always, until the next episode, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.